Hello everybody. So um, one of our topics this week, we're going to go over plant classification and how that works. So let's get going. So we'll kind of start off with the idea of taxonomy. And so when we're um, talking about taxonomy, we're just talking about how do we classify it by the plants? How do we um, make it simple so that, you know, we can easily figure this out. I'm going to move myself out of the way so you guys can see what we got going on down here. Okay, so the highest and simplest classification, and when I say simplest classification, I mean the idea that you're going to get the most, um, the, it's the broadest. You're going to get kind of a lot of things to classify into that because we want it to be simple. We only want it to have like a few different um, classifications. That's kingdom. And when we say kingdom, for uh, plants, specifically the kingdoms plantae, and that means all plants are within the same kingdom. And so we're kind of starting with that idea. How do we separate things out? We'll, we'll make things, you know, like animals and plants and just and fungi and trying to just separate things out so that it's not all one thing and it's not a million different classifications. So we start off with something simple like saying all the plants should be in the same group. So that's the kingdom. Then we've got the phylum, um, which for plants, we go down to vascular plants or non-vascular plants. Um, and then we have class and order, trying to get more specific. When we look at, um, you're going to have multiple classes and orders for um, the plants and the different types of plants. Uh, in terms of the phylum, when we talk about vascular plants, we're talking about flowering or non-flowering. So you can see over here on the right we've uh, separated it out between non-flowering so that's going to be your um, your gymnosperms the ones that end up it's usually conifers the ones that have the naked seed and when you watch the uh, tree identification lecture after this go into a little more detail about that and then flowering so flowering is going to be your angiosperms and when you um, when you have flowering plants you either have monocots or dicots Dicots have two seed leaves, monocots have a one seed leaf, and your grass, it, grass and palms are going to fall into that monocot uh, category. Beyond, below order, you get family, and so in terms of family, you're going to get a lot of similar characteristics, uh, especially in the flowers and the fruits. So when you look at something like the, uh, f like the Fagaceae family, so you're going to get um, oaks, um, all the oaks are going to be in there as well as a few other things that all have similar characteristics. Um, in terms of a, a genus, kind of sticking with the idea of oak, you get Quercus as a genus, but then you, um, there's also uh, a few others that would fall into uh, different genuses, but they're still going to be in the same family. So they're they're closely related enough that they're all that they're all fall they all fall in the same family, but they're not all closely related enough that they don't fall into the same genus. So um, usually when it's the the genus, it's the reproductive structures that separate them. They're still closely related, but uh, usually it's it might be a reproductive structure issue. And then we get down to the specific epithet or. Um, what we think of as the species level of the particular plant. But um, what we'll find out is when we're trying to name these things, we name them with the genus and the specific epithet to make the species because it's basically saying it's part of this group, but here's the specific one of this group when we, when we do uh, a species name. So here, move myself back out of the way again. There we go. So here's a taxonomic classification. Um, for corn, sorry about that. And so, what it uh, what it looks like for corn, you can start off with the with the domain, but we don't usually talk about that. We just talk about kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. And so, for corn, you start off with the the kingdoms um, plantae for plants. Uh, the phylum is uh, Magnolia phyta, so it's a part of the flowering plants. Um, the class is Lilio, Liliopsida, which it makes it a monocotyledon. It's, the order is Cipherales. The 
family's poaceae. Poaceae is the grass family, so it's a it's a grass, and it has a lot of similar characteristics to other grasses. The genus is Zia, and then specifically, uh, corn is Zia maize. So, um, and that's how we work our way down, all the way to the species level from kingdom. Once again, move myself out of the way. There we go. So, like we said before, when we're talking about a species, we're talking about the genus and we're talking about the specific epithet. So we're saying it's part of this group, but it's this is the one specific member in this group. So a uh, common species for us uh, out here in the Central Valley is Quercus lobata, or valley oak. We have a few of those on campus. Uh, nice big acorns to them, very uh, hairy leaf. There's all, all sorts of specific things that make it a valley oak. But it is a Quercus because it's an oak tree. So you still want to um, associate it with all the other oak trees to say, hey, it's like these things, but it's this specific one. So to get a species, it's the genus and the specific epithet. So it's Quercus, which is the genus, Lobata, which is the specific epithet, and then the common name is Valley Oak. And so if we look at the right here, it, we kind of um, talk about all that genus, specific epithet. If we have um, um, something special to it, hybrid cultivar, we're going to talk about that. In just a little bit and then the common name and then um, when we're writing it out if we're doing it on say a computer uh, the genus and the specific epithet are going to be italicized like I have it here italicized uh, if you are writing it down on a piece of paper and obviously you can't italicize it then you can underline and you underline everything separately so you would underline Quercus by itself and then underline Lobata by itself if you have um, some of the other things, cultivars and um, and that sort of thing, it, they have their own rules, which we'll talk about. All right, slide out of the way here. Um, so taking a look, a deeper look at uh, Valley Oak to try and go back to all the stuff we just talked about. So you can see for Valley Oak, there's two common names that it has. It's got Valley Oak and California White Oak. And you can see that there's a few varieties of, um, of valley oak as well. And then if we go into our um, taxonomic hierarchy, kingdom plantae, um, division or phylum, tracheophyta, vascular plants, tracheophytes, classes, magnolio, magnoliopsida, uh, the order is uh, phagalus, family, Fagaceae, which means now we're getting into oak trees, genus, Quercus, which is specifically oaks, and then Quercus lobata, which is valley oak. Okay, got myself as close to out of the way as I can here. There we go. So um, how, how can it differ uh, in terms of um, the different types of um, trees or plants we'll deal with uh, considering it's urban forestry. So you're going to get um, some different versions of trees. You're going to get hybrids, you're going to get cultivars, varieties, forms, and trademarks. Uh, and I'm sure eventually other different versions will pop up. So what does that mean? Well, a hybrid is the result of crossbreeding between two different species. A cultivar is a cultivated variety that requires uh, human intervention to reproduce a trait. So specifically, humans need to take one part from a tree and and bind it or graft it or um, whatever um, way it's happening onto another tree to to produce that that specific cultivar a variety is a subdivision of a species with a different trait a form is similar to a subspecies with a um, with a smaller difference uh, and then a trademark is um, a version of a tree that was specifically created by a company and and is either trademarked or, or patented. And so how does that change it when we are looking at the names of trees? Um, so you, you see hybrid here, it's going to use an X. So we got a melanchier, X grandiflora for apple serviceberry. A cultivar, you're going to see quotation marks. So Acer platinoides crimson king is a crimson king Norway maple. 
you got for variety you got var period so gladitia triacanthos bar inermis is the thornless version of the common honey locust so in terms of it being a, a similar species but having a different trait gladitia triacanthos is honey locust but gladitia triacanthos bar inermis is a thornless version of the same exact tree nothing else is different except one has thorns and one doesn't in terms of a form so uh that's just the f period so cornus florida f rubra that's red flowering dogwood so cornus florida is flowering dogwood but specifically cornus florida f rubra is flowering dogwood that has red leaves and then um for trademark you'll see the this r trademark symbol so betula nigra heritage is a specific version of river birch that was cultivated by um, by this uh, by a certain company and given this name of heritage of heritage river birch and so there's all sorts of different names that you're going to see and and um, i guess the the question that usually comes up with people is why not just use common names and give everything a different common name and the thing is um, for me why scientific names are important is the idea that you start to see the similarities between things if we look at you know if you start seeing just like apple service berry and norway maple and uh common honey locust the flowering dogwood and um uh river birch you you're sitting there going okay well yeah here's a bunch of different stuff but you, there's no you're not seeing those commonalities between them but then when you start seeing something like um for norway maple it's acer which is the the maple genus and then you start seeing acer rubrum for ed uh for red maple and acer saccharum for for sugar maple and then you see acer platinoides for norway maple and then you see acer platinoides crimson king for crimson king norway maple you start saying okay so these trees these trees uh should be similar they should be related they should kind of look the same and you start to get a feel for how um how these things actually relate to each other and start kind of looking for what are the similarities between these ones as opposed to to other ones and so because of that um one of the things we can do uh to try and um figure out these different um these different classifications as we're um in the field and trying to figure this out because people will have you come to their property and be like what what kind of tree is this and most of the time you know unless you've memorized quite a lot of them you're sitting there going i'm i'm not sure but instead of saying i'm not sure what you can do is you can have a dichotomous key with you and the dichotomous key what that is it's just a series of basically yes or no questions that allow you to hopefully go from um from very little um from you know maybe not knowing what this tree is all the way down to to what the tree is and so you've got to answer a question to get to the next one so if you sit here and you go um you start with something like does it have feathers and you go yes or no if it does have feathers does it swim yes or no okay well then if it swims and it's got feathers then it's a duck if it swims um, but doesn't uh, or if it doesn't swim but it has feathers then it's a hen that kind of basic idea but it's obviously going to be much more complicated than that with um, trees and all the little different differences with trees but the thing is if we study trees enough we should be able to kind of figure it out so um, with the tree identification that we're going to go into, you're going to learn some of these terms like compound leaf, simple leaf, palmate, pinnate, um, talk about the veins and talk about the margins and talk about, um, you know, whether a margin is serrated or um, entire and that sort of thing. So then you can start figuring out where it says here compound or simple leaf. And you can look at this one and you go, okay, well, that's a compound leaf. That's a compound leaf. That's a simple one. So we can start to kind of figure out okay so if i'm looking at this compound or simple leaf okay it's a compound leaf it says go to step two an arrangement of leaflets palmate or pinnate well i know um, that this is pinnate and i just keep going down and down until i get to hopefully the the species that i'm looking at and all the things that i just read make sense for the specific species that i'm looking at and sometimes um when 
using a dichotomous key, one of the things you'll have to think about too is not just the idea of what does this look like, but what is this not as well. So, you know, it might say something like, um, you know, leaves have a, have a grayish white underside and you might not be able to tell like is this a white underside is this a gray underside is this just a darker green underside but then maybe if you look at the other one it says leaves have a yellow underside you'll go oh well they definitely don't have a yellow underside so it's got to be this one so sometimes it's not just about what is it that you're looking at but what is it also that you're definitely not looking at when using a dichotomous key so um, it, to get a more advanced key to really get down to um, down to specific species or also to get um, down to um, maybe um, specific differences uh, in in trees like you know varieties or or hybrids that sort of a thing you're just going to need a more advanced key um, you also might want to think about where it is that you live when you're doing this because you might need like a specialized winter key if you're in a place where you you're going to be doing a lot of your work when the trees don't have leaves on them so you really want a dichotomous key that focuses on um, the twigs and the buds and all the things that are going to be there in the winter um, that aren't necessarily there in the summer and if you want to look at the um, at the notes the lecture notes you can uh, click on these links and it'll take you to some more examples of uh, dichotomous keys uh, the, there's a book specifically I use um, uh, when we're talking about native plants, California Trees and Shrub, Shrubs, um, and John Stewart is one of the authors. He was one of my professors at Humboldt. That's one that I like to use uh, quite a bit as long as it's um, um, things that are native um, to the area. Once you get into urban forestry, which we're talking about here it gets kind of hard because some things can just come from wherever and be planted here so you might need a bunch of different dichotomous keys um, and and you just really have to get comfortable with knowing a lot of different trees lots of different plants and you know how are they distinct from each other and that just comes with time and with uh, experience